Hi, I'm Jonathan Hall. Today I want to talk about the errors package in Go. So I recently did a video about sort of the history of the errors package and particularly how to wrap errors in Go. But today I wanted to dive in a little bit more just to talk about what the standard library's error package gives us. Uh, everything, not just wrapping errors. Of course, to do this, the first place to look is the Go doc for the package. Now, there's a lot of information in this uh, documentation. Uh, it's more sort of a overview of how to use errors and, and how to check for errors and so on. I'll get to some of that. But first, I want to scroll down here to the index page that shows us the functions in the errors package. You can see this is actually a very simple package. It only has four functions defined in it. Uh, there's also the error interface, uh, which is not actually defined here because it's actually part of the Go spec. Let's look at that quickly. As I've mentioned before, the Go spec is actually surprisingly uh, accessible. Uh, but what we're interested to, in today is errors. And so we can see here, there's a pre-declared type called error, and it's defined as this interface uh, with a method called error that returns a string. So that's really all an error is in Go. It's any value of a type that satisfies this interface, this very, very simple interface. The fact that it's an interface has some very profound implications that we'll get into a little bit in this video and probably more in a future video. Uh, but for now, just understand that the error type is an interface that uh, it matches this very simple def definition and it's built into the language itself. It's not defined in the errors package. It is, it is a fundamental part of the language. So with that definition of the error type in mind, let's look at the errors package and see what it gives us. Most likely, you are very familiar already with the new function in this package uh, because this is a very common way to create a new error. Uh, you can just call errors.new with some text and it returns an error that satisfies the interface we just described. And when you call that error method on that value, you get the string that you pass into the errors.new function. I can demonstrate this with some very simple code. Here I have an incredibly simple program. All it does is create a, an error va variable using errors.new and then prints out the result of error, from, uh, the error method on that type. If we run it, we get the expected output. So that's a very, very simple example uh, using errors.new. So why would we ever want anything else? Well, let's let's look at the documentation and see what, what it does. So the other three functions are all related to error wrapping and unwrapping. Uh, what is that? Uh, you may wanna watch my previous video that talks about uh, that uh, to some extent, but to get straight to the chase, uh, error wrapping allows you to take an error, uh, add some context to it, and return it such that it is possible to get back the original error. Let me demonstrate what that looks like. Here I've created a, a very trivial and ridiculous example, uh, but it illustrates the point. Here my function foo always returns an error. That error says foo had an error. Function bar calls foo. If foo returns an error, which of course it always does in this example, then it returns a new error that wraps the existing error. And it does that using the fmt.errorf uh, method, which I'll talk about before the video is over. And then it returns that. Now, if we execute this code, we'll see that the output says boo had an error, colon foo had an error. Why is this special? We could we could get the same just by uh, re uh, wrapping the error dot error, right? We could do that, get the same with this. If we save this, we'll, we will indeed see that it has the exact same output. So why would we bother with wrapping the error? This is where the other functions in the standard library's error package come in handy. So let's look at those. Let's first look at unwrap because that's sort of the core of the rest of this. The description here says that unwrap returns the result of calling the unwrap method on ERR if ERR's type contains an unwrap method returning error. Otherwise, unwrap returns nil. Okay, let's break that apart a little bit. Uh, this is actually described a little bit more in the top of the document. Um, but let's let's scroll up there and, and have a look. Here we talk about a sort of implicit interface that can be added to the standard error interface. You remember that one? Error returns string. 
So if an error type also includes a method called unwrap that returns an error, then it is said to be a wrapped error. And then you can use this unwrap function on it. So that's what it's talking about here when it says if errors type contains an unwrap method. What it's saying is if this error value that's input into the unwrap function also has the unwrap method on it, then it calls that method. That's pretty straightforward, I, I think, now that we've explained it. Uh, let's look at an example. So here I've modified my original uh, main function to try to unwrap the ERR value. Let's execute this. Uh, before I do this, what do you think it will do? Is that what you expected? Uh, of course, the, the first print line uh, returns the original string, uh, which is boo had an error, colon foo had an error. Then I unwrap the original error and it gets nil. Notice I still have, I'm still using the percent %s here and I'm passing in the value error.error. .error. Let's change this back to what I had in my original example where I use percent %w and pass the error value itself. Now if I save the file and re-execute, now you can see that, that calling errors.unwrap in my main function here actually unwraps the error. Uh, so I get the original error back, the one that foo returned, that says foo had an error. Now there are many times when you may want to unwrap uh, an error. Now an error can be wrapped multiple times. And this is where the as and is functions that are part of the standard library's errors package come in handy. Uh, suppose that you have a, uh, an error that may be wrapped zero, one, two, three, a thousand times, and you want to check uh, all of the, those sort of children errors, that's when you'll want to use one of these uh, functions. So let's have a look at those next. Is is probably the simplest one to understand, um, even though it's probably used less often than as, but we'll start with that one. So is reports whether or not the input error, the one you passed to the is function, uh, matches target. So basically you pass two errors into is, and it, it's sort of an equality check, kind of. Uh, you could think of it as an equality check, but there are some special rules to consider. Uh, let's do the equality check first though. Let's, let's demonstrate that. And then I'll, I'll talk about some of the nuances. For my demonstration here, I'm changing my foo function to return io.eof. Uh, that's not a particularly special error. It's just nice to have a package variable uh, or constant that I can use for this uh, demonstration um, because I want to do an equality check. So I need to be able to check it against some specific value. So that's the only change I've made so far is that foo now returns io.eof rather than my custom error. Let me demonstrate what it's doing. So now you can see that I'm returning boo had an error colon eof and I unwrap that and you get just eof. So now we can do our errors.is check. So what I'm doing here is I'm calling errors.is on the original error that I have returned. I haven't unwrapped it yet, you see. So I'm just passing that error, which contains the wrapped error inside of it, uh, to errors.is, and then I'm also passing io.eof, and I want to compare for equality. And if they're equal, uh, I should output this error message, or, or this message. I expect it will work, let's, let's see. Indeed, it does say, yep, it's an EOF. So errors.is has successfully traversed the tree uh, or, or chain of errors, uh, unwrapping as necessary, to see if there's an equality match, and there is. Now the extra nuance comes in the, uh, the fact that you can actually add a special method to your error type to do that equality check for you. And this is useful if, for example, your error type contains uh, an error code and you want to be able to check for that error code, for example. Um, if you're interested in doing that, uh, it's just a matter of adding the is function or method to your error type. Uh, it needs to be of this signature. It takes an error as an uh, input and it returns a Boolean. And then you can put whatever arbitrary logic you want inside of that method to check whether or not your instance of that error matches uh, the error that's passed in as the target. I'm not gonna go into more detail on that uh, because you can get as, as arbitrarily complex as you want in there. Um, and for most cases, it's really not necessary. And that leaves errors.as. So let's talk about that one. As I mentioned a moment ago, um, you'll likely use errors.as more often than errors.is, although it depends on your, uh, on your 
use case. Um, both are definitely uh, useful. Um, errors.as is in particular more useful if you use error interface types, uh, which I tend to prefer, uh, which I may talk about in a future video. Uh, but let's look at how errors.as works. All right, so once again, I've modified my foo function. Uh, this time I'm calling json.unmarshal. Uh, I'm passing some invalid JSON input and I'm passing a nil argument to it. So this will not work at all. And that's my intention. I want it to return an error. Let's execute the code and see what it does. And indeed, I do get an, uh, an error. So the original error that we wrap from the JSON unmarshaler says invalid character i looking for beginning of value. And then we wrap that uh, with boo had an error, as you can see in the output here. So how would we use errors.as here? Well, the encoding JSON package in the standard library uh, has a number of types of errors that it can return. So let's let's pick one. So we're trying to unmarshal. So one of these unmarshal errors probably makes sense. Let's look at unmarshal type error. So you can see here's an error type um, that has a number of fields in it, and it it matches our error interface. Uh, you can see here it has the error method that returns a string. Uh, so I don't know if this is the type of error that I'm returning. Uh, in uh, with my convoluted uh, error, but but we'll find out. So here we are back at the main function, and I have replaced errors.is with errors.as. Now the way errors.as works is I need to I don't pass in just an arbitrary uh, error for for equality. I pass in sort of a placeholder error value, and if the original error uh, can be represented or one of its wrapped components can be represented as the target type, then it is assigned to that type. That might be confusing. Let's see what it looks like here. So I've created this variable called JSON ERR, and it is a pointer to a JSON.unmarshal type error. Then I call errors.as. The first argument is ERR, the value returned from the function. And the second value is a pointer to my target, which is this JSON ERR value. If it is possible to convert ERR or one of its children to the JSON ERR value, then errors.as returns true and the JSON ERR value will be set to that error value. If it is not possible, then errors.as returns false and this statement will not execute. So honestly, I don't know if this type uh, matches, it, so this may work, it may not, and if it doesn't, we'll try another type. Let's see what happens. It does not match. So what that means is that json.unmarshal is returning an error of a different type. Let's check one of the next ones. I'm really sure it's not this one. It's probably unsupported value error. So let's give it a try and see what we get. Let's save that. And it is not that one. There's really a simpler way to do this. Um, oh, I'll bet it's a syntax error, actually. Let's let's try this. There is a simpler way, and I'll show you that in, in just a moment. Yes. Oh, I. it is a syntax error. I should update my message as well. So there you can see errors.as in use. Now, normally, of course, you would do more than just check whether or not it's that type, um, although it's certainly useful for that. Uh, but then uh, you can actually use the uh, the target value uh, to access, say, struct members. Let, let me demonstrate that before I move on. So here I've updated my example to call the offset uh, or to reference the offset uh, field of the uh, syntax error struct. If you'll recall from the documentation, um, that's actually the only uh, publicly or exported uh, member of that struct. Um, so let, let's rerun the example and see what that looks like. So now the output shows syntax error at one, which is the offset uh, value there. As I mentioned a bit earlier, you can also use interface types here. Uh, so rather than uh, setting JSON error to a pointer to a struct type, it could be, for example, an interface. Uh, and then uh, within the 
uh, conditional. Uh, when errors.as returns true, then the value I have represents uh, an interface uh, representation of the error or one of its children. So let's recap. The standard library's errors package gives us only four functions, new to create new errors, and then unwrap as and is to sort of recursively unwrap errors that may have been wrapped. Of course, this leaves the question, how do you wrap errors? I mentioned that early in the video uh, with my demonstration, I used fmt.errorf. Um, my other video on the topic of uh, error wrapping goes into more detail on that. And of course, you can also create your own error wrappers if you wish. And I will get into more details on that in an upcoming video. If you're not already subscribed, be sure to subscribe so you know when that video comes out. If you've learned something about errors today, please hit the like button. And if you have any questions that I left unanswered, uh, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you, and I'll try to address those questions in an upcoming video. Until then, boldly go.